This video describes how to set up the Standard Time Web Edition, but you might consider starting with the Windows Edition first and getting it to connect to SQL Server. That will get your database built and your authentication set up because you may be using the same authentication with the Web Edition here. So this is the page that you'll see once you get the Web Edition set up. We'll be going into Microsoft SQL Server and IIS to make sure that that all gets done right. So let's first of all switch over to the Windows Explorer for the installer program. The first thing you should do after downloading the stweb zip file is to right click on it and extract all the files into a new folder. So this is the folder that you'll see and then you'll run the setup.exe program. The installer will put the files on your server at this location. Program files, standard time, and then in a folder named web. Inside this web folder there is a web.config file that we'll need to edit to connect to SQL Server. But first let's switch over to SQL to take a look at the requirements there. In SQL Server Management Studio, the first thing you'll probably need to do is get your standard time database set up and the Windows Edition connecting to it. That'll make sure the database is built correctly and you have authentication into it. After that, right click on this top level node, choose Properties, then click Security and make sure that SQL Server and Windows Authentication Mode is chosen. We'll need that for the Web Edition. After that, we'll go into the security and logins, and we're going to create a login for the Web Edition. You may already have this for the Windows Edition. Let's take a look at the requirements for that. So right click on it, choose Properties. Uh, the login name is here. You'll make sure that the default database is Standard Time. And then click on User Mapping and make sure that that login has DB underscore owner rights. That will allow the web to connect to the Standard Time database and make alterations if necessary. Now that we've got the SQL Server database set up and ready to use, I've switched over to IIS to take care of a few other things. The installer will install an ST virtual directory under the default website. Now you can move that if you want to, uh, but that is the default. But I'm going to take care of a few other things while I'm here in IIS. I've clicked on the top level node and the next thing I want to do is double click on IS API and CGI restrictions. The first thing you want to make sure is that uh, .NET 4 is allowed. This happens to be a 64-bit machine so this one is the one that is allowed. The next thing we'll want to do is make sure that there is a classic .NET 4 application pool. I'll double click on that so you can see what the settings are. Uh, we'll make sure that we choose .NET 4 and that we choose classic for the pipeline mode. Then go down to the ST virtual directory and click on basic settings. Make sure that it is using that .NET 4 classic application pool that should be all you need to do to set up IIS. I've switched back to the installation folder and I'll double click on the web folder. Inside the web folder there is a file named web.config that we need to edit to connect to SQL Server. So I'm going to open that in Notepad. Now in Notepad there are some settings in this block that we need to update so that we can connect to SQL Server. The first is server, and then database, and then username and password. Well, it actually turns out that you can copy this entire block and create a new file named user.config contains these settings. And the reason for that is that during the next installation, this web.config file will be overwritten, but the user.config file will not. So that allows you to save your settings between installations. So I'm going to switch over to a new file which I've created named user.config. 
So I've opened up user.config and it contains that little block from the web.config file. Again, we have these four settings that we need to set, which are server, database, username, and password. You want to make sure that you stay within the quotations and set the values over on the right. So the first one is the SQL Server and instance name. The next one is the SQL Server database for standard time. And then we have the username and password. So that's really all we need to do to connect to SQL Server. Now that we have our web.config or user.config set up to connect to SQL Server, you can now open a browser and navigate to this URL. Now you'll have to substitute your server name there and then slash st. And it should take you to the login page. Now if you've already set this up with the Windows Edition, you'll have usernames in there. and You can simply enter a username and then click login. And it should take you to the timesheet. If the login button takes you to this update database page instead of the timesheet, then it could be one of two possibilities. Either you don't have authentication into the database, or you don't have the database set up already. So you should look into those two possibilities. But hopefully you are seeing the timesheet and all is well. If not, then uh, let us know and we'll try to help you through it. Good luck!